Math. I'll talk a little bit about this first and we'll get to art in just a second. Now, according to Wikipedia, math or mathematics is a Greek word, mathema, which means knowledge, study, learning. It includes the study of topics such as quantity, structure, space, and change. Now, as students and common people, math for us is numbers. And it's formulas and theorems and long pages of x plus y. And for many, even long pages of gibberish, kind of something like this. Quickly coming to art, one of the many dictionary definitions is, art is a diverse range of human activities in creating auditory, visual, or performing artifacts, expressing the imaginative and conceptual ideas intended to be appreciated for their beauty or emotional power. And again, for many of us, it's something that makes you go like this. Now, if I could just get a show of hands of how many of us here have had a point in our lives where we just went, oh my god, math. Mm -hmm. And how many of us have had a point where we went, oh my god, I can't do art. And that's pretty common. Now, in light of that, I might sound a little crazy with what I'm about to say. In essence, math and art are opposite sides of the same coin and cannot be separated. Now, Dave Featherstone, a professor of biology and neuroscience, further states that both science, math, and art are human attempts to understand the world around us. The subjects and methods may have different traditions and the intended audiences may also be different, but the goals and motivations are fundamentally the same, which is basically our innate nature and drive to understand and describe the world around us and share that understanding. So why is it that these two fields that are critical to human survival, segregated and considered polar opposites? Well. One of the reasons is because from a very young age, there's this weird notation that because of the fact that I can't draw a straight line, I'm not good at art, or that I am mentally unable to do math. And this concept springs up from this very widely known phenomenon of a person's dominance of his left brain over his right brain. What if I told you that this is a very dangerous misconception? This states that the left brain, which is responsible for math and logic, and the right brain, which is responsible for art and creativity. And the dominance of either sides of the brain is responsible and determines whether you're more of a math person or more of an art person. To this, um, a Harvard professor, Robert H. Schmerling, states in a Harvard Health blog that it's very unlikely that it's the dominance of one side of the brain or the other that matters. Hence, it comes down to repetition and not this brain of not this myth of brain dominance. Plus, so what if one can't draw a straight line? No one is just born with the ability to draw straight lines, just like how someone isn't born with the ability to add X and Y. It's something you learn through practice over and over and over again. My mentor, Shazia Afridi, once said, math is like art and vice versa. The more you practice it, the better you get. And I mean, sure, that's the case for most things in life, but it felt like an appropriate thing to say here. Now, applied the applied fields are science and art. Applied science is technology, and applied art is decoration and aesthetic. And to give you an 
ancient example of a merge of these two fields, let's go back to the 12th century, the time of the Italian mathematician da Vinci Leonardo of Pisa, better known as Fibonacci. Fibonacci was famous for his mathematical sequence, named after him, of course, Fibonacci sequence, which forms the golden rectangles, the golden spiral, and the golden ratio. Now, the sequence in itself is mind-blowing because you find it embedded in every single thing around you, from our own bodies to things in nature. But here is where it, get, here is where it gets interesting 300 years later because of someone by the name of Leonardo da Vinci, arguably one of the most renowned artists in history. Now, most people know of one of his most famous works, the Mona Lisa. But did you know that he purposefully incorporated math into making this piece? Not just this, but on closer study of da Vinci's work, you find that he has geniusly incorporated math, the golden ratios, and the golden rectangles into making many of his paintings. And even his study and sketches of the human anatomy have gone on to help in the field of medical immensely. Another example of a merge of these two fields is architecture, which is art, that plays a practical function by using math. And no, I'm not trying to get all of us to go out and get a degree in architecture. Rather, I'm saying we shift our perspective a little. Numbers and concepts of art are embedded in every single thing you see around you. And by creating a friction between these two disciplines, you'll be able to produce something amazing and great people in history have done it. So why limit ourselves now? So if you're a mathematical wizard and you find yourself standing behind the non-existent entry line into the humanities and art, I urge you to set aside the probability of you failing or embarrassing yourself. Plus, if you know how to hold a pencil and draw a line, be it straight, crooked, or even wobbly, I assure you, you're one step ahead. And similarly, if you consider yourself to be an art kid, and you find the tip of your toes touching the beautiful realm of numbers, I urge you to step into it. Plus, if you know two plus two is equal to five, then you should be okay.